चैप्टर इलेवन ड्यूअल नेचर ऑफ रेडिएशन एंड मैटर नाउ सी वी ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव थियरी सजेस्टेड बाय मैक्सवेल रिप्रेजेंटेड दिस थिंग द लाइट हैज अ वेव नेचर एंड साइंटिस्ट हर्ड्स एक्सपेरिमेंटली प्रूव्ड दिस थिंग so we can say this thing it was established the light have wave nature right then after when the scientist studied about the experiment related to the electrical discharge in case which one is placed at very low pressure they discovered cathode rays and later on the scientist crook proved this thing these rays emitted from the cathode are nothing but negatively charged particles and then after sir j j thompson calculated charge to mass ratio for these negatively charged particles and he named these particles as electrons and electrons are considered as the fundamental particle of matter and they calculated the speed of this emitted negatively charged particles from the cathode and speed was 0.1 to 0.2 times the speed of light okay <coughs> then in those days when the discovery of electron took place then after the study related to the structure of atom was started actually but in those days the important thing that was this one light has a wave nature that particular fact was established okay and then after when they observed some other phenomena and later on we will discuss about this phenomena and when they tried to explain this phenomena using wave nature of light they totally failed to explain those phenomena so see electrons were discovered the charged particles discovered its charge to mass ratio calculated then after millikan calculated charge of electron and then after mass of electron was calculated and it was established light have the wave nature okay but in those days the important thing was this one when from the metallic surface means that cathode when the electrons means these negatively charged particles are emitted then actually what happens so that these particles are emitted see we know this thing metals have large number of free electrons but these free electrons execute random motion inside the structure of metal but these electrons can't come out from the surface of the metal because see that metal or that particular metallic crystal as a whole it is electrically neutral it implies that the net amount of positive charge and net amount of negative charge 
that is same one so as soon as from the surface electron try to come out then surface becomes positively charged and immediately it pull the electron so electron always experience a pull inside the metal and due to that it will not be able to come out but if electron have sufficient energy to overcome this pull then definitely it can come out it implies that to liberate the electron from the metallic surface or to make the electron free from the metallic surface some minimum amount of energy is required and that particular minimum amount of energy that is called work function of metal that is called work function of metal and this work function of metal that is denoted by the symbol phi zero and it is measured in electron volt electron volt that is the unit of energy and it is defined like this one electron volt energy that is the energy gained by electron when it is accelerated by a potential difference of one volt so one electron volt that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joule now say we discuss this thing if we want to make electron free from the metallic surface or if we want to liberate the electron from the metallic surface then some minimum amount of energy is required this particular energy that we can provide to electron by different means or we can say by different processes by three processes we can supply this energy to electron say and depending on these processes of the energy delivered to electrons these processes are named as thermionic emissions field emission and photoelectric emission see first one suppose the metal is heated then electron will gain thermal energy so when electron absorbs sufficient thermal energy which one is equal to the work function of the metal or greater than that then electrons will be emitted from the metal that emission is called thermionic emission second if metal is subjected to the strong electric field of the order of approximately 10 raised to 8 volt per meter then electrons will be emitted from the surface of the metal and that is called field emission that is called field emission then photoelectric emission Sir light of suitable frequency is incidented on the surface of the metal or we can say if metallic surface is illuminated by the light with suitable frequency then also the electrons are emitted from the metallic surface and this particular electrons emitted are known as photoelectrons and this particular process that is called photoelectric emission and this particular effect that is called photoelectric effect in this particular chapter we will study this particular phenomenon of photoelectric effect and we will discuss See, 
Maxwell represented electromagnetic wave theory. We discussed this thing. But Maxwell represented electromagnetic wave theory just by calculations. Means theoretically he represented this thing light is electromagnetic wave. But in those days experimental evidences were not there related to the presence of electromagnetic waves in nature. Scientist Hertz was performing experiments related to the production of electromagnetic waves and he was trying the experiments related to it. In those experiments, in experimental arrangement, there was spark gaps and through spark gaps, the discharge were made during the experiments. But he observed one important thing in this experiment. When the ultraviolet light is incidented on the metallic plate, at that time, the spark is enhanced in the spark gap. You know, what the K N E J experimental arrangement hatiyaki, MJ. Metals to any use karyoto. Ane a metal ni vache gap rahiti janti spark generates a ni ek vajueti biji vajue jump karto. Right? Japre gas lighter manema metam neka ujem spark jump karayan evi arrangement. So he observed this thing when that metal is illuminated by ultraviolet light, then spark can easily pass through the spark gap. Definitely, the incident light is not a role to change. But, the observer is and an electromagnetic wave na production sathe koi leva deva no hato pan a ek additional vastu ene joi ani andar okay so then after scientist holwas and lenard performed some experiments related to the effect of light on the metallic surfaces. So, how they observed this effect? Which type of experiments performed by these scientists? So, first they took negatively charged zinc plate and that was connected with electroscope. So, when negatively charged Zinc plate was taken, connected with electroscope, and then after it was illuminated by ultraviolet light, then they observed this thing, the negative charge on the zinc plate decreases. Then they repeated this experiment. Then after the experiment was repeated by neutral zinc plate and when neutral zinc plate was illuminated by ultraviolet light they observed this thing the zinc plate becomes positively charged again the experiment was repeated with the positively charged zinc plate and when positively charged zinc plate was illuminated by ultraviolet light, they observed this thing, it becomes more positively charged. Or we can say more positive. 
so all these experiments leads only one thing when the ultraviolet light incident on the zinc plate negatively charged particles are removed from it and these negatively charged particles are nothing but electrons so resultantly they proved this thing when ultraviolet light incident on the zinc plate electrons are emitted from the zinc plate and then after they repeated this type of experiments for different metals and they observed this thing when light incident on the metallic surface at the time in all the cases the electrons are emitted it is not happened when the frequency of the incident light is equal to or greater than a particular frequency then and then only the electrons are emitted it implies that for the emission of electrons certain minimum value of the frequency is required if greater than that definitely electron will be emitted but if less than that electron will not be emitted and that minimum frequency required for the incident radiation to pull out the electron from the metallic surface that is called threshold frequency of that metal and this threshold frequency depends on the nature of the material of that metallic surface the metallic surface which emit the electrons that is called emitter plate that is called emitter plate and then with the help of these experiments they found this thing zinc cadmium magnesium these metals respond ultraviolet light it implies that when ultraviolet light is incidented on these metals the electrons are emitted from it then some alkali metals like lithium sodium potassium cesium when are illuminated by visible light they emit the electrons and these electrons emitted are known as photo electrons and this phenomenon that is called photo electric effect so finally holwas and lenard proved this thing yes when the metallic surface is illuminated by the light with sufficient or suitable frequency then the electrons are emitted from the surface of the metal and this effect that is called photoelectric effect clear to all of you then after holwas and lenard investigated this photoelectric effect in detail and they studied about the characteristic of this photoelectric effect and for that the experimental arrangement was made as shown in the figure one evacuated glass tube with a window which one was covered by the quartz plate was taken and in that particular evacuated glass tube two metallic plates which are known as emitter plate and collector plate this c that is the emitter plate and a that is the collector plate okay and across these two plates the battery is connected through rheostat and micro ammeter and parallel to it voltmeter was connected here when the light is 
incidented on the emitter plate. So when light passes through this quartz window, it becomes monochromatic one. And when it incident on the emitter surface, and if this incidented light that is with frequency equal to the threshold frequency of this metallic plate or greater than that, then here this micro emitter shows the current. And this current constituted here that is known as photoelectric current. Okay, so when here the current is constituted in the outer circuit, it implies that there is the flow of electrons in this outer circuit. So we can say this thing when light incident on this particular surface the electrons are emitted from it. If this light is stopped, then this current becomes zero. Okay. Now, they studied the characteristic of this photoelectric effect in detail with the help of this experimental arrangement. By changing the intensities of the incident radiation as well as the frequency of the incident radiation, what happens to these emitted electrons. And by applying different potential differences across these two plates, emitter and collector plate, how the change in the current takes place. So this type of detailed studies were carried out by these to scientist. Clear? Now, in this experimental arrangement, we already discussed this thing. See that is emitter plate, that is the photosensitive surface when the light incident on it, the electrons are emitted. And these electrons emitted from the emitter plate are collected by this collector plate that is represented by A. And now here, with the help of this commutator, we can change the potential at A and C. Initially, A is kept at positive potential. It implies that a is connected with the positive terminal of the battery. And then after with the help of this commutator, we can change the potential. We can connect the collector plate A with negative terminal of the battery. And then after, by changing the potential across collector and A meter, with the help of this rheostate, one can carry out the study related to the effect on current. And that potential difference can be measured with the help of this voltmeter. And now, by changing the intensities of the incident radiation, you can repeat the experiment. Similarly, by changing the frequency of the incident radiation, you can repeat the experiment. Okay. Now see. See. As shown in the previous figure, the experimental arrangement was made. Then First, for the incidented radiation, the intensity was taken I1 and frequency F1. Now, applying different potentials at collector, the photoelectric current was measured and 
the graph of a photoelectric current versus voltage was prepared see for incident radiation the intensity is i1 then at zero potential the current obtained that is this much so electrons emitted reach to the collector and current was constituted in the outer circuit when positive potential at the collector increased they observe this thing the current remains constant it implies that here all the electrons emitted from the emitter reach to the emitter sorry collector and collector collect all those electrons and in the outer circuit the current is constituted if you increase the voltage then also the current remains constant it implies that here this potential difference have no role in the emission of electrons from the emitter plate just it collect the electrons which are emitted from the surface thereafter when the potential on the collector was made negative and negative potential increased so they observe this thing the photoelectric current slowly decreases 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 and at a particular negative potential on the collector the photoelectric current becomes zero that particular negative potential for which the photoelectric current becomes zero that is called stopping potential that is called stopping potential so when the experiment was performed with the radiation having intensity i1 and frequency f1 the observations were as shown in this graph clear then after experiment was repeated now in second experiment the frequency was kept constant one f1 but the intensity of the radiation was increased i1 to i2 i2 is greater than i1 and they observe this thing if intensity is increased then current also increases but again if we increase the positive potential at the collector then current remains the constant one then they observe this thing when negative potential on the collector is increased the photoelectric current decreases 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 and finally at the same stopping potential the photoelectric current becomes zero third time the experiment repeated again the frequency was kept constant and intensity increased to i3 again they observe this thing the current increases here current increases from this to this if positive potential at the collector is increased the current remains constant one but if the negative potential is applied and is increased then photoelectric current decreases 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 and again at the same stopping potential it becomes zero then after the experiments were repeated like this see in this first set of experiments the frequency of the incident radiation was kept constant and the intensity of the incident radiation changed then by applying different potential differences across these plates which type of changes takes place in the photoelectric current were studied then in the another set of the experiment they kept intensity constant 
and frequency was changed. See, first intensity was kept constant, I1, and frequency F1, this observation. Then after keeping intensity constant I1, the frequency was increased F1 to F2, and they observed this thing at positive potential the current is the same one but the negative potential applied and increased then no doubt photoelectric current decreases decreases but it becomes zero for the voltage which one is greater than the previous one means this stopping potential v02 is greater than v01 Again, by keeping this intensity I1 constant, the frequency increased F3 and the experiment was repeated. Then they observed this thing, the current remains constant one, but when the negative potential is applied, the stopping potential again increases. So in this way, the experiments were performed and the results were represented here graphically. And they finally concluded this thing, the relationship between photoelectric current and intensity of light that is linear relationship means as intensity increases the photoelectric current also increases and when the relationship between photoelectric current and intensity of light represented they obtain the straight line graph as shown in this figure clear and these graphs we already discussed, okay? Now, this one was experimental study of Alvaz and Leonard related to the characteristic of photoelectric effect. Repeating the observations from experiment see experiment was performed with the help of the radiation with different intensities and different frequencies and the graph were plotted for potential difference across emitter plate and collector plate and photoelectric current. First, by keeping the frequency constant F1, 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 the intensity of the incident radiation was increased. Then they observed this thing as intensity increases, the photoelectric current increases. But if the positive potential at the collector is increased, there is no effect of it on the photoelectric current, means photoelectric current remains constant one. But if on the collector negative potential is applied and if the negative potential is increased, then the current decreases, decreases and for a particular negative potential at the collector, the photoelectric current becomes zero. That particular negative potential for which the photoelectric current becomes zero, that is called stopping potential. And see here, then after, by keeping intensity constant, when the frequency of the incident radiation was increased, then they observed this thing, if intensity is the constant, then the current obtained that is the same one. 
again if the positive potential increased at the collector the current is constant one but when the negative potential is applied and is increased no doubt current decreases and finally at a particular value of the negative potential current becomes zero and that is the stopping potential but here as the frequency increases the stopping potential also increases clear and if the frequency is kept the same one the stopping potential remains the same one if the intensity is increased current increases but see here if the frequency is changed there is no effect on the current of the frequency so this type of observations were observed by these two scientists clear so from these experimental observations one can easily conclude this thing photoelectric current directly proportional to the intensity of the light and if we plot the graph of a flow photoelectric current versus intensity of light then it is a straight line graph similarly if we increase the frequency of the incident radiation then stopping potential also increases means stopping potential directly proportional to the frequency of incident radiation so if we plot the graph of a stopping potential versus frequency then that is also a straight line graph okay but that particular graph intersect the frequency axis at a particular point and that particular frequency at which this graph intersect the frequency axis that is the threshold frequency that is the threshold frequency okay now see the summary of experimental features and observations now we will conclude here the experimental observations first thing for a given photosensitive material and frequency of incident radiation above the threshold frequency the photoelectric current is directly proportional to the intensity of incident light one conclusion second thing for a given photosensitive material and frequency of incident radiation saturation current is found to be proportional to the intensity of incident radiation whereas the stopping potential is independent of its intensity saturation current means that constant current okay and that particular saturation current depends only on the intensity and stopping potential have nothing to do with intensity third conclusion for a given photosensitive material there exists a certain minimum cutoff frequency of the incident radiation called the threshold frequency below which no emission of photo electrons takes place no matter how intense the incident light is above the threshold frequency the stopping potential or equivalently the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted photo electrons increases linearly with the frequency of the incident radiation but is independent of its intensity fourth the photoelectric emission is an instantaneous process without any apparent time lag within the time interval of 10 raised to minus 9 second or less even when the incident radiation is made exceedingly dim here see with the help of photoelectric current one can calculate the number of photoelectrons emitted and with the help of stopping potential one can calculate the maximum kinetic energy with which electrons are emitted see 
all the electrons emitted from the emitter are not emitted with the same energy when negative potential on the collector is applied then those electrons which are emitted with very less frequency will be repelled first as we increase the negative potential then more and more more and more electrons will be repelled and at last at a stopping potential when the electron which one was emitted with maximum kinetic energy is stopped then the photoelectric current becomes zero so at the potential difference v0 the energy given to the electron that is ev0 so we can say the maximum kinetic energy with which electron is emitted that is equal to ev0 so we can say this thing here the stopping potential that depends on the maximum kinetic energy with which electrons are emitted and that depends only on the frequency it have nothing to do with intensity of the light because when the frequency is changed stopping potential is changed means frequency is changed the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons also changed so these are the conclusions the photoelectric effect shows this thing the number of electrons emitted from the emitter plate that depends only on the intensity of the incident radiation it have nothing to do with frequency of the incident radiation the maximum kinetic energy with which electrons are emitted means the energy of the emitted electrons that depends only on the frequency of the incident radiation it have nothing to do with intensity of the incident radiation and this particular phenomenon that is instantaneous one that is instantaneous one now see here the controversy it was established the light has a wave nature okay and according to the wave theory of light energy and intensity are associated with each other and it depends on the amplitude of the wave we give the definition of intensity of the wave like this the amount of energy passing through any surface per unit area per unit time normal to it that is called its intensity okay so if intensity is more then that particular light is more energetic but here we observe different thing experimental results shows this thing photo electrons emitted with energy that does not depends on the intensity of the incident light and wave theory says this thing energy and intensity are associated with each and as per wave theory frequency have nothing to do with energy of light but here experiment shows this thing the frequency is associated with energy okay energy of the photoelectrons depends only on the frequency because as frequency changes energy changes this thing can't be explained with the help of wave theory second thing photoelectrons are emi emitted immediately on making light incident on the metal surface okay actually electrons within the metal are 
under the effect of certain forces and we must supply some energy to it but if we consider the wave nature of light then that wave when incident on the metallic surface then as the amplitude of it absorbed the energy is absorbed by the electron so when in this process electron absorb the sufficient energy then after it will be emitted it implies that as per the wave nature of light when the light incident on the surface and electron is emitted in this process there must be some time difference there must be some time lag but here experiment shows this thing this phenomenon takes place instantaneously within the time interval of 10 raised to minus 9 second the electron is emitted okay then as per the wave theory if less intense light means dim light that is a weak light but if the light is dim it is with very less intensity but if the frequency is a sufficient one means equal to threshold frequency or greater than that electrons are emitted clear yeah. but wave theory says this thing if dim light is there if light is with very very less intensity then this phenomenon can't take place it implies that in short we can conclude like this the wave theory totally failed to explain this photoelectric effect and how can you deny the wave nature of the light because with the help of the wave nature of light one can explain the phenomena like interference diffraction polarization all these things and experimentally you can observe this particular phenomena just like this photoelectric effect so you can't deny that wave nature of light also so this one was the biggest controversy in those particular days clear to all of you